Today on Guitar Gear 1, we're going to talk about making the jump from playing 6-string guitar to playing 7-string guitar. We take a look at some of the pros, some of the cons, and answer some of your questions. Let's see what we got. So the purpose of this video is to help people get some kind of a conceptual idea of making a transition from 6-string to 7-string. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Do I need to do it? And uh, I've run into a lot of questions from people that, that, that are wondering these kinds of things. I certainly went through this myself. And one of the reasons that I'm making this video is that I feel that there's so much bad information going around on these forums, on uh, Facebook and, and other pages as well. I feel there's a lot of bad information going around and sort of a lot of copycat stuff going on. So I'm just going to kind of hand you guys a little bit of theory. Don't be put off by this. Bear with me. I promise it's worth it. Um, and you can make some decisions for yourself. And that's what I really want to see people doing. So we're starting out with a six string, and I'm going to talk to you about why, ironically, I think counterintuitively, seven string guitar is actually easier and more approachable than six string is, especially for metal. <gasps> I know, but it's true. So we're going to be only using drop tunings today because I feel most people do. Uh, I certainly do pretty much exclusively, uh, and I apologize uh, if that's not a deal for you, but just try to bear with me on the mentality. So. Uh, we're going to start off with a really basic chord progression, and I'm going to use it both in the 6th string and the 7th string guitar. So we're tuned to standard drop D, and I say standard because the guitar is not tuned down at all besides the uh, low E being tuned down to D. Um, and in this particular example, and don't freak out, just trust me on this one, we're going to be using uh, major and minor chords uh, scales only. Okay. So here's the progression, and I'm going to show you very quickly what I'm getting at. Okay. So, here's the progression. Now, I want to start playing major and minor scales behind these chord changes. And to do that on a sixth string, I have a really big stretch that I have to deal with. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So here's the first chord. To start that corresponding major scale, I have to make that big of a jump. Okay, so if I'm singing or doing anything else, I have to keep track of this gap now, this interval, let's call it. So I'm sorry guys, we have a little camera problem, but let's just jump right into what's going on. So here's uh, the scale progression with the chords. So I have all this space that I have to account for, and all these runs and all these jumps. Immediately, I'm going to show you what happens on a 7th string. This is where it's totally counterintuitive. So this guitar is tuned a whole step down and then dropped. So don't worry about the, uh, the pitch, okay? but the concepts are all the same. So here we go. Same idea. Same exact idea. seventh string that's tuned down to the exact same note as our fifth string. And what I focus on in my playing and what a lot of guys focus on is five string major and minor scales. And you can very easily augment a minor scale to be a Hungarian minor, a harmonic minor, whatever the flavor of the week is. You can very easily change just a few fingerings or note positions uh, within the minor scale and create an even more interesting sound if you like, but we're not going to get into that today. So here's what happens. I'm going to show you this on clean first. So you really get this. Okay, with no background in theory whatsoever. This is how it is. I have this string. My fifth string is tuned to the exact same note as my seventh string. Here's the significance. When I'm rooting on this first position, the beginning of my major scale is directly underneath my index finger, where I always was. What does this mean? You don't have that big, giant interval. You don't have that big distance. Okay. Sorry guys, camera cut out again. But, what I'm saying is, when you're playing a seven string guitar, 
You've made everything much more accessible and closer together, and you can much more easily transition from chordal rhythm work to um, scales for lead playing. That's the first thing that I really wanted to cover. Um, the reason that I'm doing this video is, in particular, I ran into a guy that attacked me on the internet, which <laughs> is fine. It is, and, and I get you know some lousy comments all the time, and that's totally fine. But um, I was talking about eight-string guitar, and I was talking about six-string guitars, and a guy told me that there is uh, the same amount of similarity between a seven or sorry, a six-string guitar and an eight-string guitar as there is between uh, apple pie and baseball bats. This is the problem with modern um, metal players on the internet, and, and I'm sure this is an age-old problem, but very quickly, I'm going to say this to you, because if no one else in your life ever tells you this, if they tell you to buy a Tube Screamer, EMG pickups, and whatever else, that's super, but I'm actually going to talk about theory for just one second, please bear with me. In music, you have the notes A to G. That is it. That's it, man. That's it. You have A to G, and they're sharps and flats. There is no E sharp, there is no B sharp. That's it, that's the only rules. And so, if you're talking about a bassoon, or the timpani, or a, or a dulcimer, whatever the fuck you want, it's all the same theory. This is why band conductors can play like every instrument in an orchestra, or any band that they're conducting, because once you understand theory, those ideas are completely universal, because science, Wow, you know, so um, having a basic understanding, just, just a totally layman's understanding of theory can help you so much. Why am I referencing this? Because most of my favorite guitar players, most of my favorite guitar players play six-string guitars. Furthermore, they usually play them in E standard. Um, ben Wyman from the Dillinger Escape Plan, Omar Rodriguez from both At the Drive-In and Mars Volta, those guys are monsters, monsters. And especially a guy like Ben, I'm just going to mention this quickly, um, he'll tell you the guitar is supposed to be a mid-range instrument. The reason you have a bass, the reason you have drums, the reason you have a singer, is because um, those things combined make a giant sound. And so the guitar is supposed to just have a place within those uh, instruments. It's not supposed to be the only instrument. I love extended range. I love seven strings. I really love eight strings. Um, and you're going to be seeing some videos about that around here pretty soon. Uh, but if you're playing six string guitar and you're happy and you love it, stick with it. There's no advantage of going to seven or eight string uh, unless you need uh, uh, notes in octaves that aren't available to you. And what I mean by that is if you're playing your six string, and you're trying to go lower and lower and lower, like you wish that you sounded like, let's just pick on Meshuggah, because that's the one everybody talks about. It's super easy to say that. If you want to sound like Meshuggah, yeah, man, you need something that can be tuned down that low. But you don't have to have an 8-string to do it. Uh, there's a guy named Josh Travis you might have heard of. There's a lot of guys that play extremely extended 6-string guitars. They're putting very heavy strings on and they're tuning down. The scale lengths have been distanced to accommodate those lower tunings. But if you don't need the high strings to play high notes on top of it, you're a rhythm player or whatever, your band just chugs, no man, you don't need eight strings. And I'm gonna tell you this, and I'm serious. When I was young, I had guys tell me, no matter what you do, and I'm sorry man to tell you this, and I never thought it would happen to me, but here we are, um, I'm getting carpal tunnel, I'm getting arthritis, I'm getting whatever, it happens. And when I made the transition to my baritone scale eight string, the first day that I got it, the first thing that happened, I had excruciating pain on the outside of my forearm. And I'm not kidding, and I'm not a wimp either, man. And for anybody, and, and I get this, and I love it, I've been playing my guitar my entire life. I've been playing guitar my entire life. I have super well-developed muscles between all my fingers. Um, I, you, you, you can't be much more of a seasoned player than I am. It doesn't mean that I'm good. It doesn't mean that I'm better than anyone. I'm not saying that, but I've been doing it forever. And I will tell you, as a player, the wider that your neck becomes, the more taxing that instrument is on your ligaments, your joints, your hands, um, you name it. And so if you don't have to go to a bigger guitar, don't, man. Just don't. It's that simple. And if you're going to, take care of yourself. Make sure you're stretching. Make sure you're doing things properly. So we're back again. Take 97, I know. But uh, as, you, as you get into bigger and bigger guitars, 
the possibilities just start to open up. One of my favorite things that I heard anybody say, Stephen Carpenter from the Deftones said, um, just because you have an eight string guitar, for example, you don't have to use those low two strings. So if you don't ever really want to use your, your seventh and eighth bass strings very much, you don't have to, they're just there as an option. And what I would say to young people now, if you're just getting into guitar, literally the price difference between like a six string and a seven string and a seven string to an eight string is pretty insignificant compared to the total cost of a guitar. What I mean is, um, you might be looking at a six string that you really, really think looks great and has some features that you like, and let's say it's $600. Well, to get the eight string version of it, it literally might be like $100 more, okay? Or like $50 more for the seven string version. So when you look at that amount of money, when you're talking about spending the 600 already or whatever, it's not that much more of an expense. And so what, if you're gonna get a set of strings, maybe the set of strings is like a dollar more for an extra seventh or eighth string within the pack or whatever. And so, um, for very little money, you can get into a bigger guitar with more options on it. And if you don't want to use them all the time, you don't have to. And so when you're playing like an eight string, or in this case, a seven string, and I do have this one tuned down, but you don't have to do that. The idea would be from the sixth string down, you have a totally normal standard. You've been playing it your whole life. Your dad, your grandpa, the Beach Boys guitar that everybody's always played. There's no difference whatsoever. And I'm telling you, for these, um... For these leads, especially for metal work, if you're doing any of the, the gent stuff, anything like that, it's such a lifesaver to have everything grouped together in a way that's so much more accessible. But my real reason that I fell in love with seven, and it took a while, and so you're hearing this from me. When I first got my seven string, my first seven string, this is not it, I thought I made a huge mistake. I thought I got it way over my head, I thought it was unnecessary, I thought it was, um, I had buyer's remorse, all that kind of stuff. But then I started falling in love with the chords. And you guys have heard me play this one a million times in particular, but this. Those ambient, gigantic chords that are full of um, the same notes spread across several octaves. And they're just. string on it like I just can't reach for the things that I love now and so don't be scared I would equate this to um, getting into motorcycles getting into a, a car with a manual transmission or something like that you're gonna be able to do it there's millions of people doing it and everybody else is doing it you're a human being you're capable you're researching this otherwise you sure wouldn't be putting up with some idiot like me rambling on and on and on you from my basement if you're interested in this you're gonna get it. I promise you're gonna get it. Stick with it. Um, and so it's said too, man. It took me literally probably an entire year. Maybe not quite that long, but it did. It really took me several, several, several months of everyday practicing to go from six to seven comfortably to the point where I could pick up a seven string and I felt just as comfortable as I always have on my six strings my whole life before that. But here's the interesting thing. Going from six to seven took me like a year. Going from seven to eight took me like an afternoon. Once you break out of this concept of this is guitar, this is a guitar, this six string guitar, tuned to standard E, that's it, that's the only thing you can do. These, these are the chords, this is a major chord, this is the only shape that you can play it in. Once you get out of that dogmatic rhetoric, and you start opening your mind, explore theory a little bit, explore guitar players that are um, very out of the box. That's, that's really the process. It's not going from six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine. It's going from standard six string to everything else. And so when we come back, we're gonna do the same kind of a video going from seven to eight. Thanks for coming by the page. Ask me any questions you got, I'd love to answer them. Thanks.